Yeah. Having a blast with small that bass. Go. Yeah, look how he ate that blade, dude. Yeah. And eat! Oh! Check that. Try that. Man, I'm so happy. Oh. Oh. Yes, sir. Well, it is December 8th, 2019. We are here to debunk the idea that you can't catch fish in cold water. 38 degree water all day long and we had a blast with smallmouth bass we absolutely did i am uh, stuck on stuck stuck on the lake with one of the hottest anglers in all of northern indiana southern michigan mike raber now mike uh, out here said we're gonna catch smallmouth and like a prophet we did we caught some smallmouth and we did the, yeah, so. got some got some meat on him the sick thing is i'm guessing i'm guessing because i lost track three dozen Small mouth yeah, today, yeah, handful of large mouth, thirty fish, yeah. And he said it was a bad bite. It was very tough. It was. I mean, it was a far cry from what uh, what's capable of happening. But I mean, it, it was fun nonetheless. Now the first bait, Mike, is the Alabama rig. The infamous. In the infamous, infamous Alabama, Alabama rig. rig. Yep. Now the truth is, we got a couple bumps. We only caught one fish doing it today. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, giant, dude, giant. Oh, baby. Yeah, baby. I'm about to carry fry this thing. Look out. Oh, yes, yes sir. Fry. Yes, sir. That's what we've been waiting for right there, yeah, boy. Man. Yeah, so we switched up that A-rig, um, you know, pulling out deeper. These fish just aren't pulling up on the break like I had hoped they would or expected them to. Um, so, you know, now we're going to grind out there deeper. Those fish are definitely after these shad, and uh, I think it's going to take both of us going after them to get some more like this. Yeah, baby. There are a lot of different ways to rig this thing, but Mike has come up. If you're in a state where they're only allowed three hooks or two hooks, Mike has got the way to rig this thing oh well, you know uh growing up in indiana you know doing most of my fishing in indiana when it comes down to it when i fish a place that that i can only use three hooks uh i i used to you know not really be confident in that i used to get a lot of hits on my dummies and you know didn't know what i was doing and uh kind of over time i found a way to rig this that's that's really effective uh when you have to have dummies in general you can see my rig here so i've got my three larger baits uh, down here on the bottom you know a little bit bigger profile heavier heads today we we're fishing 20 to 25 feet deep uh, so these are all three quarter ounce heads uh, on the top you can now see those heads who makes those heads these are bite me heads yes these, bite are, me these tackle. yes they are the the shaky ball um, and that's the that's the head that i use you know it's um has a great hook great um gamakatsu hook it, it does a great job imagine um, that bite me baits getting bit huh yep, yeah absolutely yeah. you know in in general you look at the profile of the rig these swim baits up here are just three inch swim baits they're just generic three inch swim baits they're not in a, a color that's going to draw much attention kind of just there for the sake of the vibration and the overall look of the rig um so i want those to not be that noticeable to a small mouth or to a large mouth in whatever case um, so the first thing i do i take my three arms down here and I take those down a little bit, um, you know, out here at the end. So you really kind of get that profile where it hangs below the school. Because a bass, more often than not, is going to come from below to eat an Alabama rig. Uh, and so I take the top two baits that you can see, and I take those arms, and I bend those up. I want those to get up and away from uh, from anything that, that is going on down here. I want those fish, when they come into the school, I want them to pick out one of these swim baits and eat it. I don't want them to mess around with the baits up here. Um, but really, I guess the unique way of doing this that I've, that I've done is I take all the hardware. You can see on one of these, uh, the hardware itself, you know, there's a swivel and a snap. Uh, but up top, I take that hardware off so that my rig can't spin. And I take a hitchhiker, um, you know, this is a medium sized hitchhiker. And just tie, you know, put it directly on that wire. Um, and so there is, you know, there's no ability for that bait to spin. So when you're bringing it through the water, it stays upright and that tail just kicks. Instead of having it, you know, just rolling, you still get that appeal of it's, it's a, it acts like a true swim bait. So everything we're doing here that you see on the video, links to it are in the description to help you out. To click on just go through the description you actually we got relevant videos other videos and such that are relevant to what we're doing today and help you out as fishermen but we also provide links in there of every bait we're using um i'm curious as how well i know how but if you could share <laughs> with everybody how you're working it 
retrieve wise really you know in the in the warmer months you know maybe a pre-spawn bite or september october you can lob this thing out in 8 to 15 feet of water count it down to four or five and just roll it back to the boat um today when it's this cold not necessarily the case so what we were doing um and, and what you know what i've been doing this time of year is taking this rig making a long cast and actually waiting for the line to go slack. I want that rig to get all the way to the bottom. Once it hits the bottom, I give a couple pumps of the rod to make sure that it's working and slow wind, slow wind, slow wind. I'll give, you know, eight to 10 turns of the reel. Once I feel like I've kind of lifted off the bottom four or five feet, I'll kill it. And that kind of, you know, gives the image of the, the whole school of shad, you know, dying or falling back to the bottom. Uh, and, and it was effective today once, you know, it could have been effective a lot more. See, it's so effective, it even catches yourself. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we, we, we did catch our biggest fish on it and lost another one, but uh, it's, it just, it gets big bites. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was on that small swim bait, so hopefully we can get that bite. Mike, what? you're going to have to show us the deal on that thing a little bit here. <laughs> I can do that. All right, we'll get that. So number two, best winter smallmouth baits. 38 degree water. Mike really showed me something unique today. Now we all know swim baits are, we just talked about the Alabama rig, but uh, you caught some fish doing something that frankly, I'm not good at and it was a great education. Yeah, so you know, the Alabama rig is uh, kind of the, the shotgun approach to wintertime fishing, you know? And uh, sometimes it doesn't work and today was one of those days. So um, kind of a mop up bait that I've learned to use effectively in really cold water the last few years is just a small single swim bait. Uh, you can see the bite me buster head on there. That's the head that I like to throw on this smaller swim bait. And I'll throw this on a spinning rod with eight pound floral. Uh, this is a 3 16 ounce head. You can go 3 16 or quarter. He was in 25 foot of water doing this. I yeah. just blew my mind. I'm sorry, interrupting here. <laughs> That's all right. But really once you have fish found on the graph, you can make that long cast. Let this bait, I let it get all the way to the bottom and then just slow sweeps of the rod. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a chuck and wine type of swim bait bite, which exists, it's just not necessarily now. That's what um, blew my mind, is how you work this thing. Right, yep, it's a, it's a crawl it on the bottom. I mean, those smallmouth, like, like we saw, you know, sometimes they have mud on their bellies. Uh, this thing just kind of creeping across the bottom really got those, gets some of those fish to bite uh, that, that don't necessarily want to feed. But uh, it's slow, it's methodical, but it is a really good and often overlooked way to catch this time of year. I, I honestly, the way you work it and caught fish with it, kind of a lot of ways I would work a monkey punch mm -hmm. or, or a tube bait. Right. It was amazing how Absolutely. slowly and methodical. Yep. How do you feel? Not too bad, I don't know. He's pulling. Yeah, he's just a little guy. Just a long ways out there. All right. back on some better fish. <laughs> it doesn't seem like there's any size here today, which is the opposite of how things were last week. Well, you got the numbers here, little buddy. Yep. Definitely a few fish in the area. But, you know, they're not big. No. Not yet. You can't emphasize enough. Catching this main fish in December. 38 degree water. Now they used to say, oh, the fish don't bite when it's cold. Too cold for them. <laughs> really? Really? Now, the hunter fish has been showing this blade bait for over a year during cold conditions. It, without question, the best winter smallmouth bait on the market. I don't care what anybody else tells you. And man, we proved it today. <laughs> you, know, you know, you don't have anything holding back. You got him? Yep. Yeah. You're like a pretty solid one, too. Good fish. Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. That's the right species, all right. Yeah. Ah. Bad start. We'll take that nice smallie. What color of blade bait is that? <laughs> yeah, Where that's a. The back on, huh? That's the old. Uh, that's the Rabernator <laughs> perpetrator, the I believe Rabernator it's called. Perpetrator. <laughs> the Rabernator perpetrator. I love it, man. Yep, it's a. Uh, that bad boy. You know, and it's one of those things I don't necessarily have answers for, but when it comes to smallmouth, um, purple really, you know, just one of those things I kind of got on. When it's really low light conditions like that, purple seems to be a really good color. Yeah, see, I'm just throwing them out there. Yeah. Just throwing out there. Everybody can see what Mike's throwing now here <laughs> yeah. on December 8th. And it, it's so common this time of year, especially, I mean, when you have water in the 40s, maybe not, you know, it, other things come into play a lot. When you get below the 40 mark, this thing's unstoppable. I mean, it, it is by far the the number one option when it really comes down to it. Uh, 
it's just deadly. Fishing family, but they're Got some, got some meat on him. Good, huh? Yes. Hey, they're getting big on purple blade baits. That's that's, <laughs> that's what they. Eat. You know who doesn't have purple blade bait with them? Yeah. Let me tell you what I want after my big old. Yeah. Oh yeah, boy, dude. you did too. All right, we're going cage fry. Yeah. We're going cage fry right. this thing. Here comes cage fry. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> nice that's fish. how the hunter and fish does it. Nice fish, but. Phenomenal. It was phenomenal. <laughs> uh oh, Mike, we got ourselves a double. Uh oh. Yeah. Oh no. Oh, we had ourselves a double. A large mouth. Yes. Look how he ate that boy. See, you know, Mike, Ooh. you catch the small ones, I catch the large ones. But yeah, <laughs> look how he ate that blade bait. Yeah, That's sure. wow. What a sign we are in. There we go. Check this out. We need to get this on camera. Look at that shad. Holy cow, shove <laughs> that way up, put it right up next to him. Look what he's eating. Oh, check that God, out. out. <laughs> yes, sir. That's what they're down there after. I mean, now check out the profile oh, and the kind of, going. yep, in that purple tint. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Wow. It's a testament to blade bait fishing this time of year. I mean, that's really what they're doing is eating dying shads. There we go. There you go. Right on cue with the, yes, that sir. sun. And you also switched colors. I did, yeah. You know, that sun came out and you get a little bit of shine in the bait. I think he's just copying me because that's what <laughs> I was doing all morning. Whatever he says. <laughs> You know, there's so many ways you can fish for fish that are deep, uh, and you don't have to fish this deep, but today we were. There's so many ways you can do that, but there's only so many of those ways that get to the bottom so quickly, you can fish so slowly and keep it in the strike zone. You know what we're doing, Mike? We're having a blast with smallmouth bass. Yes, sir. Oh. Yeah, he's that. Hey, Chunky, though, you can see they're eating. Ain't so shabby, Mike. No, sir. Should I carry fry it? <laughs> you oughta. I'm gonna carry fry it. Here it comes. Ah, yes, sir. And that's how you want him to eat it. Look at there. Deep inside his mouth. Whew. Gosh, you know this is this is such a blast. <laughs> With small mouth bass. And Mike Raver. He's a lot of fun. Having a blast with small up bass. Well, we be hunting for fish. It does feel pretty good. Yeah, huh? it seems like it. Now, I don't want to get in the way of your masterpiece here, so I'll just stand back. Yeah, get out of the way. <laughs> Tell you right now, if I lose this fish, it's going to be your fault. I don't know why, oh, but I'll make up goodness. something. Big small. Could be a big small. Could be a big small. A big. We're having a blast. With a big smub out there. Yes, sir. Oh, my. Uh oh. Oh, he got it. Got it. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Ah. Thing. There we go. <laughs> I think he's a good one, man. Yeah. No, he's not. I've been wrong before. All right. The difference between this and, and a monkey punch or a Ned rig or something is that this will draw a reaction bite. You know, so often you get those couple the little rays in and as it's falling, one will eat it. And you just don't have that moment of decision when you're throwing a soft plastic. You know, and really this kind of puts those fish, you know, either either do it or don't. And that's really what kind of goes through their head when that happens and uh and it's deadly. I mean if you can only have one bait this time of year without a doubt one hundred percent of the time it's a blade bait. Uh, yeah uh, without question. Now yeah. I, you tell me you work it differently but it's mm -hmm. just throw it out there, let it get to the bottom, you lift your rod up till you see the vibration and then you let it sink back yep. down. And my explanation is most of these fish are on the actual bottom. And that thing, you're literally putting that bait right in front of his face. You're putting it in a strike zone where hopefully you put it right in front of the face or within a foot or two, and it's they don't have to burn many calories to do it. There you go. That's it. Yellow belly bass. Yes, sir. That's coloration because he's been on the bottom on that cold mud. These fish, that fish was what, 23 feet deep? Yes. Three feet, no doubt about it. Just pop this thing up and down, put it in front of his face, and he nipped at it, and he became a victim. 
of the hunter fish. Well, Mike, that does it for a great day of fishing, and it might be the last day of the year in the it boat. Might. Who knows? Well, pretty soon we'll be turning the lakes into Swiss cheese with doing some ice fishing. <laughs> yes, sir. So, you know, it's winter time, mm. and we're going to have a few months off up here in the north, so give me a real quick tip. I mean, someone who's experienced in fish is like crazy yeah. like Mike does. Where do you store your stuff? How do you store your stuff? And what are your plans for the winter? Yeah, I mean, it's it's a big thing to look at. You know, it's we have a bunch of junk. I mean, as as fishermen, as hunters, you know, we have a lot of stuff that We're costs a lot of money. It's yes. not junk. Yes. We're collectors, yep. Mike. Money yeah. spending connoisseurs. Feelings. Yes, <laughs> but, yeah. but uh, you know, it's important to have a good dry, um, you know, storage space where you can keep your stuff, first of all, out of the way of your wife or girlfriend that you won't get, you know, won't have complaints all the time. Uh, but second of all, you know, it's important to have your own space because you can keep things organized. It will save you money in the long run, keeping your equipment dry, um, you know, keeping it from out of harm's way. But also, um, you know, it just, it just really helps to, to keep track of what you have. You know, you can kind of keep stock um, of what you've got and that way you're not spending extra money on equipment you already have. So for me, the first thing I will do is kind of get all this equipment together and after I've kind of run through my boxes and make sure everything's in line, nothing's wet, you know, not, nothing's uh, out of line. Organize an inventory. Right, right kind of, you know, get an idea before I put things away. But then I will take it, uh, you know, I got a barn from Sunrise Structures and uh, they do a great job. It gives me a spot to keep my stuff outside. Um, they build a great shed, you know, and, and for me, having that space has kept me out of trouble. You know, I, I don't have, uh, I don't have anybody barking at me why is this laying here why are there hooks here why are there hooks there and you know it's been great it's really something that has helped me a lot so that's how we spend in this winter is organizing and inventory and getting ready to take off 2020 right mike thank you very much i've got good news for you okay now it was on a fish all the time if you were going to make it or not <laughs> but i think mike has earned his certification you are a hunter of fish thank you congratulations sir. you have graduated outstanding stuff hey we are not done filming. We are fishing all winter long. Thanks for tuning in. Until the next time, we're gonna see you back on the water. Yeah, hard not to. He's eating so good, he's pooping. That's disgusting. Get out of my boat. You boss way, I'm finding out. It's a good fish. Really good.